Okay, 4.4.2. 4. That is another day in trig. We've hopefully gotten it down so that I shouldn't have to say which one this is. You should be able to say, oh, I recognize that. That's what? Say it. Cosine. And it ends at its end of its period. It finishes up at what? 2 pi. And then if I cut that in half, this is, and this one is pi over 2, and this one's over here is hardest, 3 pi over 2. Good. Then if cosine got stretched, it wouldn't go to 1 and negative 1 anymore. If I went to y equals 3 cosine of x, that would change the y or the x? That would change the y, and it would change this to a, a 3 and a negative 3. Okay, and let's say I threw in a 5 on the inside. Now, that is the b term, and you go period is always given by 2 pi over b. Okay, well in this case, that's 2 pi over 5. So how in the heck am I supposed to end with 2 pi over 5? Well, you just, just ask yourself, how can I times this by something so I make it 2 pi over 5 when it's done? And it's not that complicated. You multiply by 1 fifth. But if you multiply by 1 fifth there, you'd multiply by 1 fifth everywhere. And that's a summary of what you've learned so far. Okay, and these are my new numbers, pi over 10, pi over 5. Uh, 3 pi over 10, and well, I guess you could say 2 pi over 5. That would be the same as 4 pi over 10. All right, so there's my uh, stretched function. By the way, was this a horizontal stretch or shrink, actually? It was a shrink. Okay. Last thing is if I throw a negative in front, and that just flips the whole thing over. So it starts low, ends in the middle it's high, and then it ends back down low again. And so that would be the, that would be the flipped function. Okay, so oh wait, one more thing. Let's say I just wanted to do one more thing, and that's, that's what we do on today's lesson, is just throw in one more possible thing you can do to these functions. And that is shift it. So let, let's say I say minus 1. Now, just think about it. If this had been a normal function like x squared, and I had y equals x squared to be a parabola, and then minus 1 would mean you'd move it where? Down 1. Same thing with this. Whole thing moves down 1. So you grab this graph right here, and you move it down 1. Now, where is 1? Now, think about this. If it's been stretched like mine's been stretched, then technically there's like 1, 2, and 3 here. And 1 is a distance of this far, that far. Like, in, in, from real-world perspective, it's like the length of my thumb, uh, the part of my thumb. So then I'm going to move it down that far. There, I've moved it down 1. That's the hardest kind to do, is you just have to redraw your graph either an inch higher or an inch lower or, you know, whatever is 1. So now, if I hadn't stretched it, if I was up here and I hadn't stretched it, remember how this was 3? Back before it was 3, it was a 1, right? Back when they were 1s, if I move it down 1, then it would go down like that. See what I mean? So then all of a sudden, the order matters. The order that you do stuff in does matter. Do you remember that you got to do things in certain orders? All right, let's review that. This is another typical kind of thing you'd have to know on a test. 3 cosine, actually negative 3 cosine uh, of 2x and then minus 1. What should be done first? Second. Third. Fourth. And 1, 2, 3. I guess there's only four things. Four things need to be done to this. Things like vertical stretch factor this. Would you write them out in order? There are two correct orders. I am really curious uh, because I always have my kids do it with the inside ones first, and then you go to the outside. It's okay to do both, but for those of you that were in other teachers' hours, did they tend to start on the outside and then go to the inside, or did they tend to start on the inside and go to the outside? Who was not with me for semester? Raise your hand if you're the new to me kids. That's many of you. All right. So tell me, was it 
did you start on the inside or outside, or, or did it? Or did they really say it doesn't matter? You do either one. Just said it doesn't matter. Okay. All right. I'm a little bit. Uh, I don't know what it is. I believe I'm a little opinionated on this one. I believe it's better practice for you to start on the inside because when we get to some problems later on, you have to start on the inside. They're not order questions, but and also because before you came to this class, you always started on the inside. Like if you had this problem, 3 minus uh, 2 times uh, 4 minus 1 if you do it in the wrong order, it's wrong, right? And where do you start? On the inside of the parentheses. And once you're inside the parentheses, then what do you do? You go inside the other parentheses. So you go inside of the inside. And so I think that's where you're supposed to start that problem. And you can't do it from the outside in on that kind of problem. So I think it's better practice to stick with what happens usually in a complicated math problem. And that is you start on the inside. Okay, so will I mark it wrong if you go from the outside in? No. And will it work if you go from the outside in? Yes. Well, I'm asking just for the sake of continuity so you can be like the kid next to you. In general, try to start on the inside. Okay? All right. If you did that on this one, and I didn't give you that warning before I gave you the problem, but then you would have started with this. And what does that 2 do? Is it twice as wide? Yes? I am recording. Yep, it's still recording, I think. Yep, there we go. Thanks for checking, though. Um, the 2 is making it either horizontal stretch or is it horizontal shrink. What do you think? Shrink. So you should have said H, shrink. And we do our tough on this word, factor. And then, you got to be thinking now, if it's a shrink, then the factor is 1 half. You can't say factor 2. Because if you say shrink with a factor 2, it's actually a 2 is going to make it grow. So... Horizontal shrink factor a half. All right, number two is you go to the outside because we already did everything on the inside. So all this other stuff is outside, outside, outside. Now of these two, it does not matter which is first, but I gave a rule that I believe is true. It's easier if you stretch before you flip. Okay, you don't have to do it that way, but I think it'll be easier. Think of it in gymnastics. It'd be better if you do your stretching before you're flipping in gymnastics, right? You stretch out first. Okay, so anyway. It's also true because you're used to the function looking like this. And stretching, it's going to be relatively easy when it's still looking like that. But when the function gets flipped, it's not as normal for you. You're like, something's wrong. This looks backwards to me. And then you have to stretch it. So it's better to me if you do the stretching first. Because the flipping is always easy. Okay, so if I stretch first... Then it's a vertical stretch of factor uh, 3. And then the next one would be the reflection. And I like to think high vo, horizontal on inside and vertical on outside. These are vo things. So that would call that a vertical reflect. Do you have to say over the what axis? No, I think you're just more likely to mess that up by accident saying x-axis instead of y-axis. That was like one of the number one things marked wrong on my tests before, was kids would get the wrong axis in their head. If you just stick with high vo, you can always remember that vertical on the outside means a vertical reflect. If you want to know what axis it is, you just think about it. Vertical is this way, right? So what axis is it going over? The x-axis. So it is a reflect over the x-axis, but a vertical reflection is good enough. Number four. Number four is, let me think. Uh, the 1, the minus 1. And that is a, you don't have to make up complicated language for this. It's down 1. If you want to say that is a translation in the negative direction, I suppose that I'll be right, but you don't have to go that complicated. Okay, so now, if you actually take your cosine graph and do these things in the right order, you will be able to have your uh, graph turn out right. If you do it in the wrong order, it won't. I showed you an example of that before. On this one, if I choose to move it down one, is that after I've labeled the scale or not? You get what I mean? If I change the scale to be a 3 and a negative 3, now moving it 1 is totally different 
than moving at one before you change the scale. All right, because moving at one now moves the whole thing all the way down there. So which one is it? Well, if you start on the inside, and we do that renumbering it first. That was these getting these numbers right here. That should have been first. Then second was the stretch and the flip. Okay, and that didn't matter what order. So I did need to slap this three on here and this negative three on here. And then the last thing I do is the move one. So yeah, you needed to renumber it first and then move it one, which then is only down this far. So obviously it's quite different uh, if you do it in different orders. And there's only one right order. Actually, there's two right orders. But either one of those right orders, if followed exactly, would have put the three before, which is renumbering this and this, before that. Okay, so order matters. That's the main theme there. Okay, and hopefully, we've had enough test questions on this that you should be pretty good at order by now. And I just recommend you start on the inside. Again, it will work if you start on the outside. Now let's actually start your worksheet. So if you guys want to grab your, uh, your worksheet out of the right folder, it is worksheet 4.4.2. Now, this one's a little long, considering we only have one day to do it. Now, granted, you have the weekend, but I'm not one of those teachers who thinks, oh, you could spend all weekend on math then. So I think as far as size-wise, there's more here than we need. So I'm going to chop a few out. Um, let's chop out number uh, 11. And... Number seven. Those are numbers you win at in craps in Las Vegas, so I'm sure that is really commonly known. Seven and eleven. Throw them out. Um, and we'll be doing enough that problem two is pretty easy too, so you could skip two. Two, seven, and eleven. All right. Let's do number one together. Describe them in the correct order. Does that really matter? Oh, yeah, it does. Because if you don't do it in the right order, we won't get the right answer. Okay, so I would recommend to start with number one, go with the inside. And that way, again, you can, when I'm reading off answers, you'll get them in the same order I do. So if we start on the inside, that is a horizontal, high vo, horizontal on the inside. Horizontal, is it a stretch or shrink? <coughs> shrink. Factor one half. Okay, number two is, do you have to stretch before you flip? No, but it's a good idea in gymnastics, so we'll do it here too. And that's a vertical stretch factor four. And then the third thing is that flip. It's a vertical reflect. Vertical on outside. Okay, I did that. State the domain. Ugh. Okay, fine. Domain on all of these, sine and cosine, for the whole sheet, how about we have a shortcut? Domain is big R with two slashes means all reals. Or you could write negative infinity, comma, positive infinity, and parentheses. But if you're doing sine or cosine, they always go forever. We never do anything to them that, uh, that chops them off until we get to inverse signs. But you're not going to, yeah, it's going to be a waste. So domain's always all reals. The range. That does depend on where you move the thing. If you moved it up or down, it's going to mess with your range. But, and it also depends on this number. Because remember how that's going to renumber it from 4 to negative 4? Well, that's the range then. From negative 4 to 4. And it touches them, so I should use brackets. Now oh, I'm hearing things out in the hallway. That means they're probably coming. They're here. Okay, so that was my domain and my range, and then uh, graph one period, oh wait, and amplitude, and period. The period's always 2 pi unless it's been changed, right? So actually, it'd probably be smarter for us to graph this and then figure out the uh, period and the amplitude of this function. I probably could have just, that's probably a good rule. Maybe you should graph these things first. All right, so hopefully you've already beaten me to it, and you've already numbered these first four spots, because you're going to do that every single time. And it's always 2 pi. 
and then pi, and then pi over 2, and then 3 pi over 2. And then hopefully you've already drawn in your, was this sine or cosine on this one? Cosine, so it's like the big valley goes down, and then the other side, perfect symmetry goes up. Okay, there's my cosine graph. And the people at home can't see this, but I'm labeling over here. I'm labeling that with a 4, and then down here, I'm going to label that with a negative 4. Okay, and then that took care of this part, my, uh, my vertical stretch. Uh, my horizontal shrink, I have to renumber these puppies. How do I decide what to change 2 pi to? I use the formula, period. 2 pi over b, and b in this case is 2. 2 pi divided by 2. I've been doing this a long time, so it's hard for me sometimes to tell if that's easy or not. But to me, it seems pretty obvious that if I take my 2 pi and I divide everything by 2, then I'll be getting the right answers. But that's the same as multiplying by 1 half times 1 half times 1 half. So my new numbers, and you guys, it's totally okay to, to just not show all your work on that and just have it numbered cleanly, but I'm trying to show you how I got them. Pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, and 2 pi over 2 cancels and becomes just pi. There we go. There's my new numbering. So now I got these two steps done. Technically, I was supposed to do this before I did that, but you know, you guys know that that won't make any difference in order. Okay, and then lastly, the vertical reflection. I got to flip the cosine. So then it's got to start down here and come up and then go back down there. There we go. And then again, you've got an iPad so you can just nice cleanly grab your other sign or got cosine line and just make it disappear. So we don't want this line in there because I don't know if I can grab it or not. Ooh, I found it. There, that's not in there anymore because it's been flipped. Okay, there is a typical question. There's a bunch of them, but I am giving you a bunch of time to, so, and it's not due until, hear me now, not Friday, not Monday, but Tuesday. You got a lot of time. Tomorrow is a work day in here because I'm expecting we'll have, you know, it's freshmen in the morning, and I know there's not many freshmen and sophomores in here, uh, but there are some. And uh, hopefully you guys will buy out, have fun, do something cool uh, because it's a rare opportunity. And uh, you'll look back on high school and you won't remember the normal days, but you'll remember the days you do something like, yeah, I played broom ball that day for two hours. It was awesome or whatever. Okay. Okay. So let's go to, um, I had to skip seven. Let's look at eight. That looks a little scary. So I suggested that we probably be best off graphing first and then finishing up those other parts of the questions. That reminds me, I never finished the other parts of the questions on that last one, but I think you can handle them. It was just like the period, which is pretty obvious. It's the last number that you number two. Instead of two pi, it was now two pi over two, which is just pi. So on another one, it was a period was pi. And the other question was amplitude, which is how high it goes. And it used to go up to, to one, and I'm pretty sure that one changed to four for an amplitude. Okay, so on this one, if I number it first and go, these are my spots, and this is going to be 2 pi, and this is going to be 1, and this is going to be pi, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, and this will be negative 1. And now if I graph my cosine, it's cosine again. I start here, and I end. I like having a halfway mark. It really helps me keep these things like straight. And you always end where you started. And then I can kind of connect the dots. Now, could you right off the bat do that reflection? Yeah, you could. You could. Uh, but I think it's best to just try to draw the parent function. We'll reflect it later. Step one. So if I start on the inside, like I suggested, I should be doing my renumbering based on this two-thirds thingy. Okay? And that is because there is a horizontal on the inside, pi, you know, so horizontal. Uh, and is this two-thirds is a small number. It seems like it's going to make it smaller, but it's really going to make it bigger. So it's a stretch. And then the two-thirds, two-thirds wouldn't be stretching. Three halves is your factor. 
Okay, and then there's three other things to do. These two are next. Doesn't matter the order, but I recommend stretching next. So that's going to be a vertical stretch factor four, and then it's going to be a vertical reflect. And the last thing is the one, which is uh, up one. All right. So now, this is again one where if I do my reorder, renumbering in the wrong order, and I move it up one right now, it would move up too far. Okay, so I should do this first. So that's this part. Period is no longer 2 pi. The period is 2 pi over b. And this one's a tricky one. The b is 2 thirds, so I'm dividing by 2 thirds. That's the same as 2 pi times what? 3 over 2. Okay. So then that makes me say, how do I change my 2 pi? I times it by 3 halves. And if I times it by 3 halves, I times everything by 3 halves. The new numbers, these 2's cancel. 3 pi. This one becomes 9 pi over 4. This one becomes 3 pi over 2. And then this one becomes 3 pi over 4. Here's my four new numbers. And I just did that step. Check mark. Vertical stretch, factor four. Okay, so now I just make this a four and this a negative four. Check. The next one, vertical reflect. Okay, so I gotta flip it up down. So I'm gonna redo it in red now. I'm gonna start down here. And then back down there. Okay. And last one is up one. So I'm going to grab this that I just did and move it up one. Uh, if this is, if, if four is two blocks, that means each block is two. So to move it up one is half of a block. So I'm going to move it up half of a block. Does that make sense? All right. So I'm going to pause the video for a second here. Okay. So um, somebody came in and got that part done. So now uh, I have stretched it and moved it, and uh, I've you know done four different things to it. They're all they're all done, and the red one is it. I want to clarify the dotted line. You do not actually make dotted lines. I don't know why I'm doing dotted lines, just to make it different than the other one, I guess. But make it a solid line. These are not asymptotes. Asymptotes are technically the only thing we want to be dotted lines. So. I'll fix mine so that you don't say, but you always did dotted lines. I've got to stop doing that. I have different colors. When you do it on paper, it's sometimes hard to tell pencil apart, and it's nice to make one solid and one dotted, but now that with iPads, you can make it 16 different colors, so there's no excuse. All right, so then I'm going to get the original one out of there. There we go. And now there is cosine that has been flipped and stretched and stretched a different way and reflected and... All right, they take a while, but I did chop off uh, two of them. No, three of them. Two, seven, and eleven. And uh, I'll chop off another one if you don't get a telegram by the end of the hour. Yes. Good question. Amplitude is the from the center line. Okay, now this thing is moved from its center line. But you can remember before it got moved from its center line. Has the amplitude really changed? The height of the wave just because I moved the thing up? No, it hasn't. So the amplitude is run from this line that would run right through here now. You know what I mean? That's like the line, the, the center line for this guy. It's from there up, which is still 4. So the amplitude is still 4. Somebody's going to tell you. Okay. And this obviously goes both... Goes forever in both directions, so that means its uh, domain is all reals. Okay. All right. And I think that covers everything that you'll need to know for today's. I'm going to scroll to the end of the worksheet just to make sure there's no sneak attack problems on here. This is all review, so that's good. All right. Now, just for perspective, when you come back, we have uh, the, the day this is being recorded is Thursday. Friday is that unusual buyout day for Heart Week, uh, and so we'll, it'll be a work time in here. You could finish this thing up in there, hopefully. And then Monday, we all have off. Tuesday uh, is 
a, I guess, so we're going to start reviewing Tuesday. Wednesday is our official review day. I think I have to teach you one new thing on Tuesday, but anyway. Wednesday is your official review day, and then Thursday is the test on this stuff. Okay? Now, today wasn't too bad. I'm hoping you're feeling like, you know, I'm not, not too scared for this next test. Again, the first few tests on trig aren't too bad. And that's all I have for the video for today. For today.